Hey guys, Jacob Harper here with Tuesday Talks. Today I'm having James Goodall on. He may not be known nationally, but he's been made known in my life. He was my high school basketball coach, and he right now is an owner of a huge lawn mowing company, and he has 200 lawns that he's been doing each week. But let's get into it. Welcome, James. We are happy to have you on the show today. We are excited to hear your story and what you have to say. Um, in a few minutes, I'm going to ask you some questions that we know our audience would love to hear and learn from. Um, but first, would you mind telling me a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, yeah, for sure, Jake. Appreciate you, man. Um, so I, I grew up in the area. My dad started a lawn care company when I was nine years old. Uh, my brother was seven. My other brother was five. Just really just started it to, you know, honestly, just teach us how to work you know, teach yeah. us how to work and um, mow grass, you know, out in this hot sun. Um, for a couple of years, you know, it just, we basically just mowed, you know, maybe 10 to 15 yards. And then once I get more into high school and then obviously out of high school and college, which was in 2008, so about 12 years ago now, um, it started to kind of slowly grow. And then when I got out of college, um, I, I was able to more focus on it and like spend more time. So, you know, it start, you know, it doubled and then it kind of got bigger. And then yeah. now, uh, last year, last March, I, I just took over, my dad retired and I, and I took over, um, the business and, you know, definitely learned more in the last, you know, year and a half than I have, you know, 10 years prior. So, it's been, it's been, it's been great, you know, but that's, that's a little bit about me, a little bit about my, I have, I have one, one son now, and then I've been married for two years now, so yeah. he's, he's about to turn one, so yeah, that's, that's a little bit about me. Um, how many lawns are you doing now? Um, so now we're on a regular basis, you know, doing about 220, you know, 230. Wow. We, we start, we're, we're more, we're more focusing on individual properties now. We used to do like you know, subdivisions. So we would have like a, an HOA that has, you know, a hundred yards in it. We had, we had three or four of those, mm -hmm. but over the last couple of years, we've kind of been dropping them because we really want to focus on the individual. Yeah. And, and so it's, it's all the same. We have one subdivision still. Um, and then we mow our, you know, our church's cemetery, but it's a smaller cemetery. That's a smaller subdivision. So we really don't have very many of those anymore. So now we get, we do about 220, 230 yards and we've we've grown in the last year so yeah, it's been that's, good that's cool yeah um, so we're just gonna jump into the question so first question is um did you always know you wanted to be an entrepreneur mm. so i know you said your dad your dad started it but like did you know that you were you were gonna take it over um i don't know if i yeah i don't know that's a good question i don't know if i if i always knew i was gonna be an entrepreneur okay. you know you know, I, I didn't know if I wanted to, to work for somebody, you know, um, or anything like that. But I feel like definitely once I got, once I got out of high school, I'm like, I don't know if I could, cause I would work, I would work for people, you know, regular kind of that quote unquote formal job. Yeah. Like they do question in quotation marks, um, in, in college. And I, and I really realized real quick that I really didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, nothing against it, but I just personally, I didn't want to do it. Um, so I think definitely out of, right out of, got when I got out of high school, I realized that I didn't really want to work for anybody. I wanted to kind of go on my own. Um, obviously I worked for my dad for six or seven years after that, but I knew, I kind of knew I was either going to take it over or do something on my own. Yeah. All yeah. right. Um, if you could go back to a 16 year old you and give him some advice, what would it be? I would tell him to work out. Work out? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I mean, that's true. I would have. So I didn't start working. I played basketball, you know, but I didn't start working out. So I was, my as my my senior year ended yeah of basketball and i started working out the week the, like the month after so i would have told him work out because i would have been better at basketball but advice i mean i would definitely tell him to read more myself you know any 16 year old I, I you know i mean i would have required books to read it in school for a, a book report or something and you know i don't even know if i read them you know yeah. but I, I I don't think I read a book. I mean, I remember reading one book. I remember 
one in high school that I read that I really enjoyed, but besides that, maybe one, but books have really, you know, completely changed, you know, my knowledge for one, but my outlook. So I would tell them to read more, but yeah. that's, that that's what I would tell them for sure. Yeah. I started, reading, I started reading a lot more like when I was like 18 and it's like, it helps me change my mindset and like, like getting a job, or, like being a, sort of like an entrepreneur, but yeah. yeah, reading books are like definitely number one thing to do. Huge. And honestly, I mean, I was talking to, uh, I was talking to John Woosley. Yeah. Um, a couple like a week ago and I was telling him, you know, like, dude, like, honestly, I haven't, I didn't even start reading books on a normal basis till two years ago. And, yeah. and it blows my mind how I, how I didn't, you know, I, how could I not spend, there's so many good books out there. I, I didn't even focus on that. So I would definitely tell him 16 or 26 year old me, you know, dude, you got to read, you know? So yeah, that's huge. So who, who are your top three mentors and why, why are they your top three? top three mentors um i mean my dad obviously you know my okay. dad I, he taught me how to work i mean i think that's a lot of people but he taught me how to work and really really showed me uh like as an entrepreneur sometimes the jobs you can't really put a time on it you know it's not from eight to four you know or nine yeah. to five sometimes it's it's 16 hours sometimes when it snows you got to work through the night you know so he taught me that you know, a lot of times the job's not over until it's over. The hard work. So my dad, for sure, um, Todd Weber, you know, really a mentor and, and really a hero of mine. You know, really when I was in junior high, I really connected with him. Mm -hmm. Really, he he showed me how not not really, I really didn't really need to teach me anything. Like he sat me down and taught me stuff, but just watching him, how he handled himself, how he how he enjoyed life. You know, he just loved life and around the kids around the junior hires and high schoolers, how he was just a normal guy yeah. as well being Christian and everything. So he was just a normal guy. So definitely Todd Weber, a mentor. And then obviously Mr. Woosley, James Woosley, he was my junior high basketball coach. You know, I've been coaching with him for seven, eight years now. You know, I, I think those two guys for sure I look up to and, you know, they've, they've helped me on my adult journey. You know, I ask them, I ask them questions all the time or Mr. Woosley and then Mr. Weber, you know, We'll, we'll keep in contact, but those two, those three, you know, my dad, Todd Weber, and then, and then Mr. Woosley. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those guys for sure. Yeah. Brother Woosley makes my list there too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. He's helped me a lot, you know, for sure. Yeah. All right. So I just made up this question. I just found it. We, we want to see how it works, but um, yeah. so what are you doing if we finish this interview and you find a lottery ticket on the ground and um, you find out that you won $10 million, what are you going to do with the money? Ten million dollars, man. Ten million dollars. I mean, I mean, I know half of it's going to taxes, but yeah, half <laughs> is going to taxes. The other half is going to my wife. No, I'm just kidding. Um, she'll take it all. No, ten million dollars. So, man, if I had ten million, I mean, you know, I I think you know, first of all, give you know, in my mindset is is a lot of giving. Obviously, giving, not just you know, to, to charities or to church or whatever the case may be, but, you know, helping my, you know, my parents maybe pay off their house, stuff yeah. like that. But then, dude, I'm going on a trip for one. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going on a two month, two month vacation. But, and then what, what but then once I get back, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to invest in, you know, in, in some real estate. Right. Right. Yeah. So it doesn't go, it doesn't disappear. You know, I take that money and I use it so I can, it'll, it'll still be there in, in 40 years, you know, it, yeah. but that's a good question, dude. I never thought about that. <laughs> Dollars, man. <laughs> that's a that's lot crazy. of money, man. <laughs> yeah. That is a lot of money. And to some people, it's not a lot of money. That's a crazy thing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, um, no. so how do you manage discouragement when things are not working out? Um, I think, well, in business for me, at least personally, like I've only been doing it for a year and a half. So yeah. discouragements and, and, and the week doesn't go exactly right for me. So it, it's, you know, it, it's, it's definitely happened in the last, you know, month, you know? Yeah. So I, I think for me, it's definitely looking at the positives in my life, obviously, you know, I have, I have a great family, you know, I have a great uh, healthy son, healthy wife, 
you know, I have, I have a great life, but then also looking at my long-term goals. Okay. Like, you know, if I get down on, you know, for me in my, my case, if my mower breaks that week, then that's a discouragement, you know, it's going to take us longer, whatever case might be to pay it out. I'm going to fix it. But, you know, long-term, it really doesn't affect me long-term. My goals are still the same. Yeah. I'm still going to comp. I'm still focused on that goal. So I think for me, discouragements, you know, that, I think it's for me, it's on the water off the duck, duck's back, you know, and, and I'm looking towards the future, the long term. So that's what's helped me personally, you know, looking towards towards my 10 year goals and my five year goals instead of just the here and now, you know. So you just look towards the future and see how you're going to help others and like how you're yeah. going to get through it. Yeah. All yeah, right. For sure. So talking about long term goals. Um, so what are some of your long term goals? Long term goals. Um, I have a list of them, you know, I have a list of, uh, especially for business, for personal, yeah, all that. I, I think number one on my list, me and my wife, we have a bucket list. So, uh, and when you walk in our apartment now, we have like a, a big cork board of like, it's all like bucket That's list. Awesome. So we, we've been able to mark, we've been able to mark some stuff off and it's, it's really cool. I actually just bought a, uh, um, like a, a bucket list for visiting all the MLB stadiums. You know, that's and it has, you can put a picture so I can mark those off. So that's in my bucket list. But long-term goals, you know, one of them is really to me is to be able to give a million dollars to missions. And, you know, I, I really don't know if that's, that's capable. I, I, I believe it is, but uh, you know, that's one of my long-term goals is, is giving a million dollars away in my lifetime, yeah. but uh, and also a hundred thousand dollars in one year. Um that's giving goals. And that's like on the top of my list, man. The top of my list is, is that, um, long-term goals for the business, um, for it to be just going without me. Like, you know, if you ever heard yeah. of the, you know, the statement, you know, you step into the owner's spot. Yeah. Yeah. And you were getting, if I were to get hit by an elephant, the business would be the same, you know? Yeah. I heard that statement a couple of years ago, you know, if I were to get, if I were to die, the business would be perfectly fine. Um, and I think that takes a lot of pride. You know, I think in pride, you want to do like, I want to be able to matter, but you know, yeah. I think you have to set up the business. I'm trying to set up the business to where I, they don't, they don't technically need me. Um, long-term goal though. I think that yeah, the giving honestly is, is huge. You know, I think for me, the only reason why, you know, why make a ton of money if I'm not going to give it away, you know, is, is I don't need, you know, personally don't need a ton of money to survive, to live. So yeah, that, that's definitely a goal. Yeah. All right. So I, I know I've asked you some hard questions, but this is probably the hardest question. Um, if you could pick any superpower, what would it be? <laughs> superpower, dude. I mean, I feel like I already know what your, yours is. Like maybe like have speed, be as fast as you can, but well, what do you, what is yours? Speed is sweet. You know, you just fly around. Cause I, <laughs> you know, cause I, I like doing time lapses of my job. And if I was actually that fast, that'd be crazy. Yeah. Um, I mean, flying, I mean, obviously flying, dude, you know, if you could just fly crazy strength, this is awesome too. I, I do. I, I think if I could do it, I would do, I would do flying because I could just, yeah. Like we're going to we're going to Florida in a in a month, and I could just fly there. You know, I don't have to get I don't I don't have to wait in line. I don't have to wear a mask on the plane or anything like that. I fly. Yeah. No, yeah. I think I think we fly, dude, for sure. That's super cool. Uh, yeah, flying would probably mine too. Yeah. All right. So as always, today's show was super valuable information. I just want to thank you, James, for being on here today, sharing all your sharing all your your story and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all man. Right, I appreciate man. it. Thanks for everything. Yeah, brother.